So today I have a special guest with me, ENFP NP. Hello. <laughs> uh, <laughs> an uh, upcoming YouTuber who has been like doing all these really crazy, uh, like 60 second sketches on the different personality types. Uh, they are really funny and I will link them down below. So you should definitely go check them out. Um, in today's video, uh, we're going to do something a little bit different because, you know, I've, I've seen the comments online. I've checked personality database. I see uh, what people have been writing. I see 50% uh, of you are saying I'm an INFJ and 50% of you are saying I'm an ENFP uh, or ENTP. Uh, so yeah, what is this? Crazy. <laughs> How do people uh, find it so hard to tell if I have introverted intuition or extroverted intuition? So um, I that's why you brought in an expert. An expert on extroverted intuition. Uh, <laughs> somebody that could test me, that could challenge me uh, uh, yeah. to make me see, okay, how good is he how really at extroverted intuition? Good question. And yeah, indeed, that's what we're going to test out today. <laughs> so let's bring it on. Uh, I just, just a short disclaimer. <laughs> this is not like a, an MBTI approved way of testing or like a Jungian approved way of testing extroverted intuition. It came out of my own imagination, this little test. Um, so yeah, don't get too crazy about the scientific approach that has not been used <laughs> in this test. However, here first, this is science. This is absolute evidence. So um, you can count 100% on this being a valid experiment. Exactly. Uh, I'll, I'll explain at the end of the video my rationale for this, uh, this test. Yeah, you will understand it all. OK, so let's go for it. Uh, we're Good. first going to start with a little quiz. And I just want to say, first and foremost, that the limits to your answers are the ones of your own imagination, Eric. <laughs> so question number one, pick a pizza at this crazy pizza place. <laughs> number one, fruit salad pizza. Number two, ramen pizza. <laughs> number three, you get to pick your favorite pizza that you have like in the real world. Four, you can come up with your own crazy pizza. <laughs> oh, I'm, now I'm actually really excited about the ramen pizza. Really? Uh, I've had ramen burger once and that was incredible. So okay. ramen pizza, bring it on. Very, very interesting answer. <laughs> Okay, question number two. In this crazy life of yours, you get to become a mythological creature. So, first pick, you get to be a centaur, wise and just. You can read the future in the sky. It's so practical. Number two, you become a sphinx of the Greek mythology. So, cunning and dangerous, you ask passengers, I mean, people passing by, travelers, uh, difficult riddles, riddles that can lead them to death if they answer them wrong. Number three, you pick your favorite creature. Number four, you come up with your own mythological creature that doesn't exist. Oh, I'm picking the Sphinx. I think it's amazing. I'm super um, in love with I this. see a movie. pattern, sorry. <laughs> Question <laughs> answer number two. <laughs> Sorry, so the Sphinx, because because you want to kill people with your own crazy riddles. <laughs> Only if they answer it wrong. You're very generous. I think I think that's one thing we can say from this test already. <laughs> okay. Question number three. You get to live and explore a fictional universe. 
but it's for real. Like she can actually die in that universe. So Harry Potter. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, child. <laughs> Number one, the world of Lord of the Rings. Number two, the world of Doctor Who. Uh, number three, which might be your answer, uh, your favorite world that exists. Oh, Doctor Who. Number four, you make up your own world. Doctor Who. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Doctor I've Who. always wanted to be a doc the doctor. Uh, that's <laughs> been uh, one of my long-term goals. Interesting. Interesting. I just need a time machine. Well, it's it's going to happen. This is actually like a, a prophecy of what's happening in the future for you. So great. I'm happy. Uh, <laughs> question number three, I think. <laughs> you get to pick the ideology of the future that will replace capitalism in our world. Getting a little bit political here. So if you're not comfortable, this is a safe space. You get to have your own ideology <laughs> as oh long as it's not repressive, <laughs> oppressive to anyone. Okay, first. Oh my God, then, then I, that's impossible. <laughs> first option, anarchy. So there's no one in power, but everyone on earth is super respectful of one another. Number two, true capitalism, where nobody influences the offer and the demand. Uh, it's all naturally regulated. Number three, your favorite option that already exists, an ideology that has already been theorized. Number four, you come up with your own ideology. I uh, would pick, um, honestly, I would say my long-term political goal has always been anarchy. <gasps> Revolution. Uh, however, uh, it's definitely the kind of long-term anarchy. I see it happening like three, four hundred years into the future uh, when people have matured enough uh, to uh, take more responsibility and uh, to uh, think more long-term. And uh, I see a world where Bitcoin and uh, new technology and things like that have made it uh, redundant to have nation states. Interesting. I stopped listening after Bitcoin, but great answer. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I think this is great. And uh, indeed, if everyone's respectful of one another, if everyone is mature, I think it's an awesome choice. In a practical perspective today, I'm very centrist. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> but applied politi a political things if I would vote today. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, you know, vote Eric. <laughs> vote anarchy today. <laughs> 400 years into the future. <laughs> yes, in the future. In the future. Uh, okay, last but not least of this little quiz. Um, you get to pick the religion that will dominate the world. Uh, I mean, for the rest of humankind. And, you know, they all go well. Number one, Buddhism. Uh, number two, Pastafarianism or the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Uh, I kind of love this, this option, just saying. Number three, your favorite pick uh, that already exists or four, you come up with your own religion. I used to be a firm believer in uh, the Holy Spaghetti Monster. Oh, oh, uh, interesting. But, uh, I've kind of shifted over to the Holy Noodle Monster. Uh, okay. It's like a uh, yeah, Japanese uh, spin-off. Uh, <laughs> the ramen. Uh, I see. I see a pattern here. No, no. <laughs> Honestly, um, I uh, believe all religions have some truth to them. So if I would go for any religion, it would be a combination of all of them. Uh, and in applied senses, I do like Buddhism. Okay. So is that your final answer, Buddhism? Or is it the syncretism of? The, secret, oh. uh, the, the, the synthesis of all religions. Synthesis, yeah, indeed. Okay. So number four, but of all religions, you said, uh, like. Including the holy pasta monster. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's like a lot, like all the religions in the world. Yeah. Interesting. 
I really want to see that happening because it sounds very, very fun. <laughs> you know, like there would be a day off every single day because every single day would be holy. Exactly. There would be no conflicts in the world anymore. No. Yeah. Everyone's right now. I mean, in your own world, Eric. <laughs> Beautiful. I love this. Uh, number three, uh, test, sorry. Second, second test. Um, still, the limits are the ones you set, uh, your imagination has set. So it's an innovation test. What do you want to invent? But there are rules. You're not allowed to use metal or electricity. And what, what's the invention you're coming up with? And if you want to give us your thought process, you know, to make it sound like it's a scientific approach. Right. Um, yeah, what I would create would be uh, mm, some kind of Hmm, I would say, my God, uh, <laughs> I, must, uh, I don't typically invent stuff. Uh, Interesting. Uh, paper cell phones uh, that are sustainable and biodegradable. Paper uh, cell phones, okay. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't be able Why? to. Uh, uh, like, uh, it would be perfect because instead of pushing buttons to text people you could write with a pen on them and send a message that way okay and just use a regular eraser so it would be a little bit back, back to basics uh, okay it would be very boomer friendly uh, <laughs> good uh, very marketable yeah okay we'll talk about your interest in boomers in another session therapy session <laughs> um interesting this is young and counseling this is young and therapy psychotherapy <laughs> what does that mean what does it mean what does it mean okay it means archetypes hmm oh, the boomers have become an archetype yeah they are <laughs> i mean we can talk about this in another video because i'm sure everyone would want to know about this this archetype Okay, test number three. Finish the lyrics of those famous songs, but you obviously have to change the words. First song. It's my life, it's now or never, cause I am going to live in heaven. <laughs> okay, wow. You're going to live in heaven. Like, I really feel like this should be therapy now. Oh, I panicked halfway through that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no idea where I was going. Mm, interesting. Yeah, okay. I, I need to write this down. So. Uh, okay. Where? This is very interesting. Second song. Uh, how does it go? <laughs> I think I did it again. I made you believe. That's from Oops, I Did It Again. Britney Spears. Free Britney. She was free today. That you <laughs> could be free. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't get to be influenced by, by her life. <laughs> and what I yeah, she is not free. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Existentialism. <laughs> I can bring a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> I studied way too much. Britney Spears, we would like to tell you that uh, according to existentialism, you're not free. Hashtag but free Britney. nobody is. <laughs> okay. Fun, fun answer. Okay. Next one. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again because... The stars are slowly approaching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, carry on. They are gonna uh, give you 
Bad tubs, full of cash. <laughs> Full of cash. <laughs> Echoes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Love it. Wonderful. I think I think Others. we should like release an album. I'm actually notorious for forgetting all lyrics. Uh, right. I cannot remember like lyrics of anything. Um, well, this served you well today. Yeah, this actually like one of the first times where I was celebrated for my ability to invent lyrics. Well, that's wonderful. I'm happy you feel happy and like celebrated in this video. This is great. <laughs> okay, last but not least, the final test. And for this one, I need to, uh, to send you something. But first of all, I wanna give you like the instructions. I'm going to show you a picture and you're going to have to come up with a story that will become the next bestseller novel in 2023 because you need some time to write it. So here's the image and I'm going to send you to you. I don't know how. <laughs> don't What's know. that? Uh, no, I don't have it on my phone. Uh, Participants oh. shout. <laughs> mm. Hold on, sorry. We need some music, like if you want to carry on with the lyrics. <laughs> okay, here it is. I'll send you send it to you on the chat if it's possible. Yeah, I think it's possible. That's what you use the shout for. Wow. Yes, it worked. Donald. Huh. <laughs> you, you need to show it to the world though. Yeah, you know, I will, I will screen, show this one second. I will just edit this in, actually. <laughs> I see um, a world uh, plagued by uh, purple tentacles that are coming from the Earth's core. Uh, and I see a bridge. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, this, uh, these tentacles, they're trying to uh, engulf the world and uh, yeah, keep everyone locked in ignorance. So uh, what they, they do is if you think anything intelligent, they will basically come and they will slap you. Uh, and uh, oh, okay. so, uh, <laughs> where is this going? <laughs> this uh, this bridge. This is the bridge of enlightenment. So uh, the only way to escape this uh, fate is to cross that bridge of uh, enlightenment. So sure. that's the that's the main plot of the story. I, I actually want to read this book now. Can you please write it? <laughs> uh, I. I could, 2023, you said, right? Yeah. It's not unrealistic. It's not. I think it's great. It's uh, a lot of metaphors and uh, it makes a lot of sense to, to me. So at least you will have one reader. <laughs> it's a copy from Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy. <laughs> Was it though? A little bit. I think they had like this, uh, they came to the stupid planet and then they uh, had those things. Ah, interesting how to interpret this. Okay, so we've come to the end of this little test. Um, my criteria when I came up with this test was to see how open to novelty you would be because Extroverted intuition is about chasing new possibilities. And actually I tested this test on an other ENFP who is actually my doppelganger, but that's another story. And this uh, ENFP answered everything in the way that I, I really expected her to, to answer. Right. And you did basically uh, nothing like her. <laughs> so, 
based on that very scientific approach, um, I would say that extroverted intuition may not be your main cognitive function. However, because, okay, in the quiz, you only picked the novelty, absolute novelty option where you could make up your own thing once. And you, you yeah, I mean, you mixed up all the religions in the world. Wonderful idea, love that. Uh, but most of the time you, you went for something, yes, new, but not completely new, or just something from the heart that spoke to you. And that, that's totally fine, perfect uh, answers. Yeah, but they're yeah. not, I would say, <laughs> in a very subjective way, extroverted intuition speaking. Uh, and I, I will tell you, like, my friend, my ENFP friend, she only picked uh, making up your own stuff. <laughs> uh, except for the pizza. She went for her favorite pizza because that's like, really, that's like introverted feeling. She was like, I have loyal, I feel loyal to that pizza. <laughs> I need oh, to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. um, it's um, interesting because when you did that quiz with me, every time you said, uh, like, I kind of stopped listening as soon as I got, you got to my favorite option. Uh, interesting and, uh, until like that one with the doctor who because my first like yeah okay harry potter would be great uh but then when you said doctor who you're like you reminded me of it and you're like oh yeah i haven't seen that one in a long time and i was like actually i can love that one uh and um honestly i think a lot of the time when people see me as novelty seeking or curious uh it's within an area where I've already thought for a very long time about That's it. That's very interesting. Um, I have uh, uh, a love for, I would say, uh, novelty and for things like that, but I'm also terrified by it. It's definitely, it can feel out of my comfort zone. Uh, so whenever you got to that fourth option of come up with your own option, uh, I'm like, yeah, sounds fun, but scary. <laughs> but also, no. That's yeah. very introverted intuition as your main cognitive function. Like, I, yeah. I would say that's like a symptom of that, symptom, a consequence of mm -hmm. it. So very interesting. Uh, also, during the uh, innovation uh, test, uh, when I, I specifically put the word, the word rules in it, and you know, it didn't trigger you. It triggered me when I wrote it down. It triggered my French when like, oh, rules? There are no rules. <laughs> it's so funny because, yeah, you didn't pick up on it. But again, this is very subjective. Like, I hope no one's taking this very seriously. But I, I thought it was, was very interesting uh, for that. Also, uh, in the song, uh, part of the test, uh, you said for the first one that you started panicking because you didn't know where you were going with the words, no. which is also like, I'm scared of novelty, like I'm scared of uh, maybe more extroverted sensing, like, I don't know where I'm going, this is chaos, uh, which is also like being an introverted intuitive and not an extroverted intuitive. Uh, I think, yeah, it's, it's just interesting, those little things uh, that came out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely a lot of intuition here, uh, ability, and a lot of imagination as well uh, with the, um, the silly <laughs> uh, next novel, next bestseller novel contest uh, with the image. Uh, and that, that one was like a right question for me because I have had so many ideas for books to write. Um, I have series of large amounts of plot written down already for nice. uh, yeah different worlds. Uh, I started writing things like that when I was like very young. So it was, yeah, it was a side hobby of you. mine. And it's also like you, you picked something completely metaphorical. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what that's so like... That's very intuitive. Sorry? Wouldn't uh, you have done that? The, uh, uh, that uh, yeah, definitely. Like, I, I mean, 
I think when you when intuition is your main function, you always go for something metaphorical, even if you're not aware of it. And I mean, that's also like just being human in stories. We also we always like for it to. Uh, we want to see something like some kind of lesson. So, and lessons are better learned if they're not if they're subtle lessons. So metaphors are really good for that. Um, yeah, I would I would totally go for something metaphorical. I think that a lot of the ENFPs uh, write are used to write as adolescents, like literally all the ENFPs I know had started a book including myself. Um, yeah, so fun stuff. That's uh, probably why I came up with the question. <laughs> but yeah, what, what did you think? Um, I thought um, those uh, tests were really fun. Um, so <laughs> I think we should probably get into the idea of doing cognitive exercises more often, uh, because it's so easy to look at those descriptions from pure like, do I have this trait or not? Uh, kind of sense. But I think a lot of time it can be like, yeah, sure, I have a little bit of everything. Yeah, I can agree with the relate to everything I read to some extent. But what we should do is really test ourselves. Like, could I do this for a week straight uh, yeah. all the time, constantly? Would I enjoy that? And how would I feel doing that? Mm -hmm. uh, because, because um, yeah, it's exactly deeper than just... The, the MBTI is about preferences. Yeah. And so it makes sense to test like in the long run uh, how much you like, how much you enjoy using a certain cognitive function. But also, you know, like they're unconscious processes. And I think it's, uh, it takes a lot of objectivity about our own subjectivity to be able to test our cognitive functions. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I was very happy to come up with the test for extroverted intuition because uh, I'm into the MBTI and as an ENFP, I feel like I understand it very intuitively, but I don't know how, if someone who is not, like for instance, could I come up with a test for introverted sensing or extroverted thinking? I don't think, I don't think it would make sense. But it's definitely a nice exercise. I kind of want to check it out and see if I can take it further in uh, my personality tests and other things as well. So I will definitely be looking at if I can incorporate actual tests or challenges for people. Also, not from just from perspective of figuring out your personality type, but also from the test uh, the idea of can I develop uh, the functions uh, and can I learn to understand them better by understanding how they do things kind of. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. And like, I'm definitely open to exploring all the possibilities. <laughs> uh, maybe, like, I mean, that's just an idea. We could ask, like, people in the audience to, like, if you're an extroverted thinker, how would you test people? Uh, if you're an introverted feeler, how would you test people on that? You know, yeah. that, I don't know, get the input of the people. <laughs> I want to say, wow, uh, everyone first, what did you think about the tests we did in the video? And uh, yeah, yeah what, uh, like she said, how would you test your own cognitive function? And uh, first, uh, finally, I want to thank uh, you for uh, coming on my channel and uh, yeah, doing this experiment with me. And uh, once again, uh, I will link uh, NP's videos uh, down below. So go check it out when you need a laugh or just uh, want to explore uh, the MBTI and personality psychology from a little bit of a silly, fun, lighthearted approach. <laughs> yes, that's definitely my approach. Thank you so much, Eric. This was so much fun and uh, yeah, it's been lovely. <laughs>